appreciate that. Jumping now is U.S. Congressman Joe Sestak of Pennsylvania and Congressman Mike Turner of Ohio. Both are members of the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman Sestak, make the case for why we should change the deployment from those uh, fixed positions in the Czech Republic and Poland to the more mobile approach, uh, facing, uh, in fact, focusing on the, uh, the medium-range missiles rather than the ICBMs. The national intelligence estimate that came out in June said that the long-range missile threat is sometime distant in, in the future. But right now, there's a short and medium range threat from Iran from their missiles. They are increasing in production. So what we have is our troops in the Middle East, Israel, and southeastern Europe, including <coughs> Turkey, even when the Bush administration's plan by 2017 to put the GBIs, ground-based interceptors, in the Czech Republic and Poland won't even cover any of that threat. So by having an upgrade on our already sea-based infrastructure, Aegis ships, we will have immediately an ability to protect our troops, Israel and southeastern Europe. As that capability of Iran potentially develops, there's a four-phased upgrade on the Aegis ships that gives as good a capability as the ground-based interceptors would do in Europe, around Israel, the Middle East, and almost as good back to the United States. What a smart move at less cost, more immediate capability, and then you can pivot and say to Russia, how about helping us diplomatically and with economic sanctions on Iran that we force it not to produce a nuclear weapon? What a great, Turner, great plan. What's your problem with the president's decision to redeploy? Well, well the, the problem with the president's decision is he's creating a false choice. He's saying that, that short-range and medium-range missiles uh, must be dealt with immediately. Therefore, we can't address the issue of ICBMs and the continuing threat to the United States. And that just really isn't where we ought to be. We ought to take very seriously the threat from Iran uh, to the United States. The plan that the Bush administration Do they have ICBMs? Disabled, the, the plan, well, there, every intelligence estimate indicates that by 2015 that they will have the capability of ICBMs. But of course, that's the, the current intelligence estimates. They could accomplish that much quicker. But the plan the president has put on the table doesn't protect the United States until 2020. The plan he just scrapped would have protected the United States by 2013, and it was the most cost effective uh, plan. In fact, uh, my subcommittee, I'm the ranking member of the Strategic Forces Subcommittee, just received a briefing at the beginning of this year with a classified report. This is a classified version. And this report concludes an independent assessment that, in fact, the most cost-effective system, the one that would have protected the United States by 2013 and that was most cost-effective compared to the Aegis ship uh, system that uh, Representative Sustek just said, was the one that the President just scrapped. Cost-effectiveness and protecting the United States earlier. That was pretty important. Let me get back to what Congressman Sustek. The question here is our relationship with Putin. Everybody who's told me anything who knows anything about this knows we need Putin's help if we're going to put the uh, cap on the nuclear potential of Iran. How does this fit with that goal? Well, this redeployment to the, to the mobile forces. The administration has based this on the technical of feasibility, having it more rapidly there. And in fact, the IDA study of which I read that Mike mentions actually won't be implemented until 2017 because it was based upon starting this system five years ago. That's why the study is actually out of date. But we are now able to say to Russia that, look, no longer do you have this stick in your eye, although the United States has the same capability put into that sea. So therefore, you can help us have economic sanctions, diplomatic <coughs> sanctions with Iran because they've helped them on their nuclear reactor business. And now we need them to close the land routes economically if we are to apply sanctions on Iran, if it does continue to pursue its uh, nuclear capability. This is a use of our military in a political military way, and it does give us the same capability at sea, actually much more immediately. Isn't this a question, Congressman, of uh, fighting the new war against Iran rather than fighting the old war against Russia? Well, perhaps are we are we in danger of being attacked by Russia in any way? Perhaps Representative Sestek should reread this report because I have it in front of me, and it says the proposed European deployment is intended to be operational by 2012, 2013, and provide full-time coverage. I've asked Secretary Gates to release the classified version of this. I have the declassified version here in front of me. Um, it is 2013, and that's the real important issue: is that the president is scrapping a, a program that would have provided protection for the. 
United States from ICBMs okay. by 2013. The intelligence estimates currently say 2015. Iran could do it quicker. 2015, the president comes up with a plan 2020, clearly a five-year gap, and says, okay. I'm going to be doing it quicker. He's uh, we guys got a reporter. I'm just getting it right now from Reuters, the British news service, that the Russian president, of course, of Medvedev, is pleased by Obama's decision. Quote, the fact that they are listening to us is an obvious signal that we also should, uh, we should also attentively listen to our partners. That's us, our American partners. Medvedev said in an interview with the Swiss media ahead of a meeting next week with Obama, quote, in politics, there's always a scorecard. What's wrong with getting better relations with the, so with the former Soviet Union, with the Russians? What's wrong there's with that? Absolutely well, nothing's nothing wrong, wrong with having with any, there's nothing wrong with having good relations with Russia. The problem is, is that it shouldn't come at the expense of the defense of the United States. It's, it's against whom? I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get a focus. Who are, let me go, but let me Chris, go to Congressman Sessler. Yeah. Like, who are yeah. you afraid of, the Iranians or the Russians in terms of a missile attack? The Iranians or the Russians? Who's our would, primary threat? I would be much more concerned about the Iranians. That's why we want to get an immediate capability out there on which these ships which to protect the, the, the short and long. And if I could, Michael, was please, proposed, Mike, if I could. The problem with the study is that it doesn't take into account that it started, this is assuming signed ratifications with the Czech Republic and Poland, a signed uh, implementation agreements, and also a requirement that nothing can be starting to be built until the two-stage GBI is tested. That won't be to 2012. Even That's so, why it's five more years after that, to 2020. 2017, before you can even all get of this, this built out the president's there. plan of 2020. You can't deny it. The president said it's right up on the White House website, 2020. Now, Chris, with respect to Russia, you have to understand, this is a defensive system. Russia is requesting that we abandon a defensive system. Now, why would they do that? I don't know, but I certainly don't think that them asking us to abandon a defensive system is in our best interest. Well, why do you think now, they want us to do that? Well, one thing's for certain is that when they ask us to abandon the defensive system, they're looking to their offensive systems. And we're entering start negotiations with them by a concession by this president up front where he's received nothing for that concession. Historically, there's been no indication ever that conceding to Russia early is going to get you greater concessions later. Now, having a, a good relationship with Russia is important, but, but for what end? They certainly have not supported us with respect to Iran and sanctions to Iran to stop their nuclear program or their missiles missile program. Don't we need to no rush us right now? Chris, if I can use the Russians' curiosity here, what's very that they're interesting. willing to be influenced. What is very I think we need to rush us with Iran. I guess we need to see things differently. But the Chris, Iranians if you could, have not shown that they're that... willing to be influenced, and Russia has shown no interest in influencing them. Go ahead, but, you know, we, absolutely. It's interesting. Even once the GBI system in the Czech Republic and Poland were to be established, it basically has a capability, a very de minimis capability against, against a missile or two that can't handle any decoys whatsoever. That's why it's absolutely useless against a very sophisticated adversary like Russia. Now, well, that's when you sit so back, curious. we can why work we with Russia, and for instance, system. we have worked with it very well. Why would we have a defensive system? to try to bring it well to work okay. against North Korea in the past. This is truly how, uh, how political military relationships should okay. be done, enhancing our capability by moving Russia to help us with Iran. Great okay. move. Clearly a defensive system. We should not be abandoning it. We should not be conceding to Russia before we even start negotiating. Okay, thank you very much, Congressman Mike Turner. Thanks for having Thank us. you, Congressman Joe Enjoyed Sestak, it, running Thanks, for the United Chris. States Senate Thanks. in Pennsylvania. Former Admiral Sestak, I should say. Up next, Saturday Night Live takes a whack at Congressman.